message by speaking to the audience and generations far beyond this time. In another translation, it could be interpreted as him saying, blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. He's not just talking to those persons there. Yeah. He's yeah. talking yeah. about the future yeah. and the promise that will come later. Yeah. Dr. King, like John, experienced the words of James Weldon Johnson's third verse, eighth stanza. We have come yeah. treading a path yes. through the blood of the slaughter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In other words, John the Baptist was going to be killed. Yeah. Yeah. James Weldon Johnson could not have predicted that Dr. King would be slaughtered. Uh -huh. As great as Dr. King was, he was not the first African-American leader to call America to task regarding its laws, regarding its second-class treatment of citizens of color, yes, sir. for its economic injustice, and its modern system of racial apartheid or Jim Crowism. There were many before him. Yeah, yeah. However, this afternoon, I will only briefly focus on one. This man that I want to focus on was born April 9th, 1898. Right. He was a bass singer. He was an actor. He was a social activist. He was a lawyer. And he was an athlete. Yes. He graduated from Rutgers College where he was an all-American football player. Yes. And where he also graduated down Victorian. He had an international career in singing, as well as acting in theater and movies. I want to ask now, are you preparing paths of promise yourself? This portfolio does not sound like a prophetic leader like John the Baptist, who would challenge the political powers of his time to make injustice roll down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yet this gifted African-American who could have easily gone to Hollywood mm -hmm. or had a professional football career chose a different path. My, my. A path that was living with pain. Yeah, yeah. After all, he finished Columbia Law School while playing in the National Football League. In response to the Civil War, the Spanish Civil War, and fascism and social injustice, he became politically involved. Yeah. He was especially critical of the United States government for its lack of action on the lynching of black men in the South. Yes, sir. He affiliated with the Communist Party, and he challenged America for its inaction. He was involved in the Harlem Renaissance before he heard the cries of a suffering people in other countries and other cultures. He turned his action to the Republic forces of the Spanish Civil War and became involved in the Council on African Affairs during World War II. His past history of supporting pro-Soviet policies led him to be scrutinized by the FBI. When the war ended, the CAA was placed on the Attorney General's list of subversive organizations. This man who preceded Dr. King was investigated during the age of McCarthyism. Mm -hmm. And because he would not recant on his policies and statements, the U.S. State Department withdrew his passport. Mm -hmm. His income suffered. His right to travel was finally restored in the 1958 United States Supreme Court decision. But his health had suffered. He tells of a wonderful saga of his life in his autobiography, Here I Stand. I hope by now you know I'm refer who I'm referring to. He was the prolific and prophetic Paul Leroy Robeson. Yes, sir. He was born 70 years before Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Both of these men responded to the call for human rights in America. Both were scrutinized by the FBI. Both experienced backlash when they criticized the United States.
States foreign policy and its military policy. Both were distinguished African American men of deep faith and extraordinary wisdom. So I invite you to learn what others have said about this one person who I believe prepared the way for Dr. King's promise beyond his own pain. In 1998, the great historian Leroy Bennett said this, before Dr. King dreamed, before Thurgood Marshall petition, petition yes. before Sidney Poitier in Moken, before the big breakthrough in Hollywood and Washington, before Jim Crow signs came down, yes, sir. and before the civil rights banners went up, yes. before Spike Lee, before Denzel Washington, Come on, sir. before Sam Jackson, all before right, Jackson, right. Jackson all right. there was Paul Robeson. Yes, Go ahead, right. sir. That's right. Tell the truth. One of the most phenomenally gifted men Oh, yeah. yeah. He lived one of the most extraordinary stories of this century. When he died, even his critics That's right. and his detractors conceded that he was one of the immortals. My mind. Right. My mind. In 1979, the writer James Baldwin said this at a time that seems that there was no hope at all, Paul Robeson spoke out for all of us. Yeah. Yeah. In 1958, Dr. King could have easily described Paul Robeson with these words. And Dr. King said this, there is nothing more majestic and determined than a person of courage, of a person who was willing to suffer and sacrifice for their freedom and their dignity. Yes, sir. Although Paul Robeson never was jailed like Dr. King, he was socially confined and placed on cultural house arrest. That's right. He was not honored with cultural heritage by the State Department. In Dr. King's letter from the Birmingham jail in 1963, he said this, an individual who breaks the law of conscience that conscience tells him or her is unjust and unwilling to accept the penalty by staying in jail to arouse the conscience of the community over injustice is in reality expressing the very highest respect for the law. I've heard numerous religious leaders of the South call upon their worshipers to comply with the desegregation decision because it is the law. But I have longed to hear white ministers say, follow this decree because integration is morally right and the Negro is your brother and sister. In a 1953 speech, Paul Robeson said, no one has yet to explain me to my satisfaction. What business a black lad from Mississippi or Georgia sharecropping farm has to do in Asia shooting down yellow and brown sons of an impoverished rice farm? Rob Edelman in 1979 said this, Paul Robeson is a legendary American, one of the few true Renaissance men of the 20th century, an actor, a singer, a scholar, an athlete, political activist. Robeson could dominate a stage of concert hall like the sun radiating its rays across the land on a hot summer day. His rich baritone voice was resonant and melodic he enraptured his audience with his talent despite the color of his skin. Mm -hmm. Had Paul Robeson been born white, had he been born in a more tolerant era, every school child would speak his name That's among right. those of Muhammad Ali and Yes, King. yes. That's right. But he was yes. doomed to be stifled at a time of the climate that he was born. Teach, sir. His successes were ultimately overshadowed by heartache and rejection, That's right. the result of a society which could not tolerate a black man who spoke his mind. Mm -hmm. Are you preparing a path of promise this afternoon? My mind. Much more can be said of this precursor to Dr. King, yeah. but I close by letting you hear 
his determined voice. That is a lesson to every person who has entered this country and who has contributed to its growth as a nation. In his book, Here I Stand, Paul Robeson said these words. One congressional committee member angrily demanded, why didn't you stay in Russia? And Robeson responded, because my father was a slave and my people built this country. And I ain't, I'm gonna stay right here and have a part of it just like you. May we never end our efforts to prepare a way for others that will follow us. And may your vision of humanity let you be a person that prepares others for the promise. Are you willing to enable to prepare the past of promise for the people that will follow you? That is my ending question. May you live long, may you learn much, and may your days be limited beyond those days that John the Baptist experienced, beyond the days that Dr. King experienced, beyond the days that Paul Robeson experienced, beyond the paths that are treaded through the blood of the swamp. God bless you. Thank you.